What is going on guys welcome back in this video today we're going to learn how to easily implement pagination in flask so let us get right into it all right so here's a quick preview up front this is what pagination looks like this is what we're going to implement in flask today the idea is that we have a lot of items that we want to display for example in this case 100 different numbers and instead of just listing all of them so that we have to constantly scroll through them, we can split them up into multiple pages. So in this case, I have 10 different pages and I can use this next button and also the previous button here to explore the different pages. You can see page six, page seven, eight, nine, ten. We have these 100 different items and we have 10 per page. And that is something that you oftentimes see when you have large databases, large tables, data frames uh, that you want to display on your website, but you don't want to display it. Uh, just all in a row so that you have to constantly keep scrolling. You want to have usually pagination combined maybe with a search function. So this is what we're going to implement today. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to make sure that we have Flask installed on our system. For this, we're going to open up a terminal, a command line, and we're going to type pip or pip3 install Flask like this. And once Flask is installed, we can just start a simple new Flask application by creating an app.py file and importing, let me just zoom in a little bit here, and importing from Flask, Flask with a capital F, that is for the application itself. Then we also need render template so that we can render an HTML file. And we need request because request allows us to access the URL parameters. In our case, we're going to have uh, the page, which is going to be relevant, so we need to get it using request. Uh, and then we're going to just create a simple application with Flask and the parameter underscore underscore name underscore underscore and then we're going to have a single route here so we're just going to say app route the route is going to be slash so home or the default route uh, the name of the function is going to be index and what we want to do here now is we want to get the parameters from the URL that tell us which page we're looking for. Now, one thing that's important here, I'm going to add a pass here for now. One thing that's important here is we need some data. And since the focus of this video here is not on an actual uh, Flask application, I just want to show you the concept of pagination. We're going to use just a couple of numbers. However, in reality, you would load the data from a CSV file, from a database, from an Excel file, from a JSON file or something else. Um, and you would not just use numbers. But for the sake of simplicity here, just to illustrate the concept, we're going to use numbers. And we're going to create a list items here with capital letters because it's going to be a constant list and it's just going to be the list of the function result of range from one to 101. So we specify 101 because that does not include 101. So we have one, two, three, and so on up until 100. That's the idea here. And now we want to display the items. Now what we can do here without pagination is we can create a directory here, templates. We can specify here that the template folder is templates. And we can just go ahead and say, um, return render template, then index HTML, we need to create this file. Um, and then we can say just uh, items is equal to items like this. So that would be no pagination. And of course, we can complete this by saying if underscore underscore name underscore underscore equals and then main, and then we can just say app dot run debug equals true. And then we also need an index HTML file here. So index HTML like this, let's call it my pagination app. What I can do here is I can create a list. So I can say I want to have an unordered list and I want to have multiple list items and the list items should be all the items. This is again, no pagination yet. So I can say here for item in items using the usual uh, Jinja templating engine. So I can just do it like this. And then I can have at the end here, the end for um, and in between here, I can now specify that for each item I want to have, uh, come on, for each item, okay, it doesn't recognize the templating, doesn't matter. Uh, for each item, I want to have a list item, and uh, I just want to display the item. So that would work, hopefully. Let's visit the endpoint. There you go. And this is, again, no pagination. We have all the values listed in a row. This is not what we want. We want to have pagination. So 
what we're going to do now is we're going to every time when we go to index, we're going to calculate uh, which or we're going to get from the uh, URL parameters, which page we actually want to go to and then we're going to split the data into pages. So we're going to say here the page that we're interested in is request. So this is why we imported request arguments. So the URL arguments get and we're interested in the argument page. And the default if we don't get it is going to be one. So we say, okay, get me the value of page if there is no value. I want to have the value one, this is going to be the default, the first page, and the type of this data is int, actually, the type int, not the string int. So that is just saying that we're expecting an integer, this is going to automatically typecast it. So per page, we want to display 10 items. Now, you can also change that if you want to, but we're going to display here per page 10 items. And we're going to say that the start is going to be dependent of the page. So depending on what page we're at, we're going to say page minus one times per page. So we want to know, okay, what's the starting point? If, if it's the first page, we want to subtract one to make it zero. And we have the zero with uh, item, which is the first item. So index zero. Um, and if we have one, we want to have, uh, or if we have two, we want to have one, we go 10 instances, because we have 10 per page. So we start at index 10. That's the idea of the start. Here. And the end is just going to be the start plus per page to go to the end of the page. That's the idea. And the total pages or pages, the total pages is going to be equal to just the length. So we're going to say here length, uh, or not the length, the length divided by per page. So the length of the items plus per page minus one divided floor divided by per page. That's the basic idea here. Um, and why do we need all this information? We need this information, first of all, to decide which items we want to display. So we're going to say items underscore on page is going to be equal to items. And we're now going to use start and end to do the slicing. So we only get the items that we're interested in. And the important thing is we also want to transmit the total pages so that we know when to stop uh, providing the next button. So what we're going to do now here is we're going to say uh, items on page is going to be equal to and now I'm blocking this with my camera, it's going to be equal to items on page. And then um, what was the other one? The other one was total pages is equal to total pages. Now we can use this information in our index HTML file uh, to provide pagination. So this here is going to stay the same. The only difference is that uh, we're going to now say, uh, instead of items, we're going to say items on page. And I think that already this should uh, result, if I run this, if I'm not mistaken, I think this should already result in only 10 items being displayed because uh, the default is one. There you go. So we only have the first page, so to say. Now I can, of course, go ahead and provide the URL parameters manually, but we're going to have buttons for that. So what we want to do here is we want to add buttons for previous and next. And also we want to have some text displaying the page number. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to use curly bracket percent if we want to say if the page and do we need to also provide the page? Yeah, we need to also provide the page. So we need to also say page equals page so that we can work with this value in the HTML file. So if the page is greater than one, we want to display a previous button, because of course, it doesn't make sense to display previous, if you are at page one, because there is no page before page one. So we're going to say if the page is larger than one, so if we're at least at page two, we're going to display the following anchor, it's going to point to URL four. We want to go to index. And um, the page that we want to use is going to be page minus one. So this basically specifies a URL parameter. So this is going to uh, append to our URL, I'm going to use a comment here to show this, or actually, this is HTML. So I got to use this comment here. Um, if my page is my page.com slash this is going to say, uh, or just my page.com, it is going to append here a question mark page equals and then the value one, two, three, and so on. This is what it basically does. So it goes to index, but it adds this uh, URL argument. And this is going to give us now the URL for 
this particular page. Um, and this is going to have the text previous. Now we can copy this and we're going to say, and we need to add an end if here first. We're going to say now that actually we can copy this whole thing. We're going to say if the page is less than total pages, then we're going to display page plus one and we're going to call it next. And then in between, we want to have a span, which is always going to be visible. And this span is going to say page, page off total pages. And that should actually result in pagination. Uh, the problem is we have for some reason here, uh, curly brackets, where is that? Uh, here, because we don't need this and here. So let's run this again. There you go. We can go next, 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 previous, previous, next, 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 next. And here I don't have a next button anymore. And you can see, look at the URL up here. We have page 10, page nine, eight, and so on. So this is how you implement pagination in Flask. So that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and hope you learned something. If so, let me know by hitting a like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below. And of course, don't forget to subscribe to this channel and hit the notification bell to not miss a single future video for free. Other than that, thank you much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.